Uh, we are live, yes, action. Perfect. So, hello everyone, good evening. So, your workshop is here, the monthly workshop. I promise we're going to have a guest. So, we're going to have a fun. So, this is my dear mm -hmm. friend, Machet. Hello everyone. So, welcome to this Broga and Stretch workshop. For those who are new or have no idea what is this going to be about, we're going to talk about why yoga is good for guys and why stretching is important for everyone. So, Magic here, he's teaching yoga. He will tell you all about it, but he's done many other things. So, he was the personal trainer. He still is a personal trainer, the same like me. Hey, oh, hey, Dorota. <laughs> Yay. You maybe you can speak even Polish, hey? No. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember already. Perfect. So, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, so, I've been always doing some sports. Uh, yoga was definitely not first on my list. Uh, I've been doing gymnastics when I was a kid, uh, playing outside. Basketball is still one of my biggest loves, especially in the street version of it. Then I went to the uni, the only one probably I could get, it was the sports uni. And then I was introduced to lots of other sports. So maybe I didn't learn much about in terms of knowledge and stuff, but I started to love movement. I started to appreciate other sports. Uh, I, I was forced to learn other sports. So I could start liking them. Uh, but you kind of have to, right? Because I've done also University of Sports and Physical Education, and once you go there, mm -hmm. even with the one specific sport, they push you to do everything. They push you, and of course, you can't be good in everything. Yeah. But uh, I was so surprised with some of the sports, how difficult uh, they are. Uh, like, uh, the biggest surprise for me, I think, was canoeing. I just always, uh, I just uh, imagine those big guys with big chests, super quick, and it happens that it's so difficult to even get into it. It's so difficult to balance on the water in this uh, in this long canoe. We couldn't even do this. And then <laughs> I said, oh, "Wow, this is uh, actually quite quite impressive what these guys are doing." So I was forced to do lots of things, and I just fell in love in being active. Uh, then when I came to London, of course I couldn't do things I love the most, so meeting my friends playing basketball. Uh, and gym was the, the easiest option. Gyms are in London are everywhere, you can swim, you can, you can train your muscles. So I started to train muscles. Uh, it's a good way to meet some people, but you don't need anyone, you, don't need, uh, you can come anytime, they are always open. And I got into training muscles. Not even for some love of looking good, it was just to do something and in enjoying being in this environment. Mm, and this is how I became a personal trainer. I also started to, I'm always curious of learning new stuff. So when there was occasion of learning some martial arts, I was super happy to do this. So I had some experience in this. Then. And universe put uh, one boxing coach on my way, so I started with boxing. So pretty much I've done lots of lots of different activities. And after doing all of all of them, especially my favorite were always games and anything you can compete. And suddenly Yeah, you like your competing. <laughs> and suddenly <laughs> I ended up uh, on the mat doing yoga. Which is now my my new love and uh, a bit different than all the others. Yeah. Of course, I'm not saying I'm. I completely stopped doing others. Uh, maybe I reduced them a bit because some of them are just counterproductive. You can't be good in everything. Mm. Like, like I don't know, athletes will never be good in very good in ballet or yeah. ice skating. It's just not what they're and they're not supposed to be. Yeah, because uh, you're teaching it now as well, you're going to support your practice with that as well. But, uh, but yeah, but now 
I started to think of yoga not only from practical point of view, like stretching because it's needed, but because I just love it. Good. So why do you think that guys should do yoga and why they don't do it? Uh, I, I would hey, must stop in monkey. <laughs> hey, how are you? Hopefully you come to learn something about the yoga and stretch. I love the name. Yes, so why do you think they should do it? And why do you think guys don't do yoga? I think I would start from why they don't. But they don't. Uh, it's, uh, it's very obvious. It's not a sport. It's not a sport. Uh, there is no competition there. You can't really win. Uh, so what's the point of doing it? Uh, yeah, there is no ego in the yoga, uh, eh? <laughs> It's just... Uh, there's Guys like to play, guys like to, to have games, guys like to fight. This is nothing about it. It's actually all different than that, <laughs> I would say. Uh, also, especially now in our world, it looks like very feminine thing. Mm -hmm. You can be surrounded by uh, 20 girls, um, the teacher is also a lady. Uh, for a guy, it's a bit weird environment. It could be intimidating. It is a lot. I'm sure for, for many guys. I think... <laughs> no, they are not. Ah, oh, Stevie is a big fan. He's gonna do yoga with us too. <laughs> also, I think most of the teachers are also girls. I think if they do... Because every mm -hmm. teacher probably does what they like the most, but they are the strongest. Yeah, uh, strong aspect of uh, so Guys uh, look even worse comparing <laughs> to them. No one likes to be be the worst, and from the guys being worse than all the girls is even more humiliating. <laughs> uh, also, lots of there's so many types of yoga. So mm, that's true. Uh, when we go to the, we see yoga in the fitness uh, fitness clubs, but we also see yoga schools for yeah. someone who is a beginner. It's Yoga, isn't it? What's the it, I, I see that that's actually quite a big challenge uh, depends where you're going if you go to some like a leisure center I feel because I teach yoga in a few different places it's not as many guys because all of what you're saying but then when you go to a special yoga school or to some gyms where athletes are lately I've seen we actually teaching even yoga for athletes yoga for lifting so they're realizing that there is actually nice connection. So I guess it depends a little bit by teaching. I see the change is coming up slowly. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it is. However, if you don't know <laughs> what to choose, and that's true, the proper true yoga is not really physical activity. It's uh, mostly spiritual aspect. The physical aspect is just the side of it. And as a guy. When I see just uh, yeah, uh, people true. sitting and chanting, uh, mm -hmm. talking something in uh, Sanskrit, uh, doing some weird poses, which sometimes, if you don't understand, they just look boring. Yeah. Uh, it's not very encouraging. Yes, yeah, so they should maybe do the groundwork yeah. and search yeah. of types of yoga yeah. and think perhaps what would fit yeah. into their personality. Yeah and into mm -hmm. that type of training? I remember when uh, I was still like, looking for different classes, what they are doing. And if you see yoga and people doing savasana, lying down in the dark for five minutes, and you think, what's, what's what the, the point? <laughs> what's the point? Why would I spend my time there if I can go playing or getting tired somewhere, somewhere yeah. else much more efficiently? Yeah. Yeah, so why do you think that they should do it? Why is it important? Mm. I mean, I will say f how it started for me. Uh, mm -hmm. It was, and probably most of guys will start from the same. I see, this is, I see also in my class. Uh, it was practical. We just needed some stretch. We just needed some stretch. For most of guys, I think yoga, if it's not any of the spiritual thing, yoga is stretching. This is pretty mm. much the same yeah. and uh, I also started from from stretching the first turning point for me I think it was when I started the martial arts mm -hmm. then I thought okay I need to I need to kick 
Can I kick? It happened that I was very, very tight in all the hip area. One of my friends, uh, she was a very good instructor actually, uh, she was telling me, you are terrible, your glutes are so tight. <laughs> you have to do something about it. So I started. Uh, I wouldn't call it yoga, uh, but it was, I was doing, without knowing, pigeon pose. Uh, yes, the, the asanas, like uh, a hatha, uh, what is posture? Uh, so this is what I was spending time, or lifting my leg, or hanging, or putting it on any machine, just to, to... I saw him, we were in the same gym, he always had the leg and some equipment, like, uh, why the higher up? <laughs> but st still I didn't have the knowledge, so I was doing mostly hamstring. Mm -hmm. uh, still, people would say, oh, you are so flexible, but it's only one muscle, which was okay, all the rest were not. Yeah. Uh, so this was one of uh, the first turning points when I got interested. So mm -hmm. I decided to go for a few few sessions in our in our gym to different instructors, and then I was told more and more often what else is tight. Mm -hmm. So so you would say it would be helpful if the guys who are new to it to find perhaps their limitations or what the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was a, this happened to me on. On the fitness yoga when I went with my colleague Cairo, uh, it was just yoga without. I mean, it wasn't yoga; it was fitness class when we were doing yoga postures. Yoga postures mm -hmm. simply for stretch. And then I noticed that all the guys have the same problems. We couldn't do basic things like lifting arm straight. It's always that way. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, why is like that? Why can I have it straight? Why guys can't do this? Why we can't do anything can't like that? Like so arms. cross arms, it was impossible. And uh, as guys, we, didn't, we don't like to be worse than <laughs> other people. So uh, it was already a challenge. It was yeah. already a challenge. Uh, that's how I started to be more, more interested. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was saying, why guys should? Uh, should do it just for those reasons. Uh, first, we start to notice, oh, I can't do things which other things do. I don't think it's good. Yeah. I think there is a problem then. Yeah, because uh, it's not affecting the alignment. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, when you're so tight, your biomechanics, the joints are not stuck up on top of each other and can cause injuries. What many guys do, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when they're lifting and do stuff. And then, so it, it already comes to the other. The other reason why uh, to prevent these injuries. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, lots of people start doing yoga. I heard it so many times, like, "Oh, I'm so bad. I think I should do yoga." It's rather do yoga or stretch, so you will never get bad. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, I never had those problems, but I saw many, many situations with guys just after a long break. They started to run without, or playing football, obviously, or, yeah. or rugby without even any any warm up. Muscles are, were tight, hamstring torn, half a year of break. Yep, keep going. And so, so Dorota just saying that she got injured doing yoga in the past. The reason being going too far, too fast. The key for me is to warm up and progress mindfully. Mm -hmm. Guys are often very tight and they might not enjoy it at the beginning. Too far, too fast. Yeah. Of, of course they don't enjoy it because uh, uh, stretching in the understanding like we take attitude from fitness is pushing, pushing, pushing harder, mm -hmm. no pain, no gain and, and it hurts. It really hurts. The more tight muscles you have, the more it hurts. Do you think so that's one of the reasons why guys don't want to do it? Uh, because it's just too painful. Because uh, <laughs> they have to give up. If you start pushing and you are on the level of pain, I don't think anyone will last more than 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then you look even worse because <laughs> who wants to stop if no one else is stopping? And if plenty like this is watching you, mm -hmm. right? Of course. <laughs> Uh, so I feel like pain is not what guys like. Yes. Like the most. No one does, but I think mean, the ladies <laughs> deal with this problem much better. Yeah. What would you say is the common issue for the guys 
and is there a difference we already found a kind of established between there like a men and uh, women in terms of the tight area or difficulties i mean definitely is the hips uh comes from the anatomy of those ladies got uh, wider hips uh, uh, guys have more muscles uh, so hips definitely is always uh, a problem mm -hmm. uh, but then also from what uh, how we train and the more we train some area the more we are proud of the more <laughs> issues there so what guys like to do it's upper body it's upper body yeah, for the backs shoulders mm, what girls are, are training glutes glutes so the, yeah remember if you guys did my yoga last sunday i was scraping through all of my pigeons it was disaster and all what we did we just added some weight for the pump class on a saturday to sunday i saw we're gonna get through it so glutes for the women mm. definitely um just uh, also problem with the guys they don't really see this problem until it comes very bad because I can be proud they, of they scrape it on the carpet that's what they do <laughs> and so sometimes they don't even uh, realize because uh, if my pecs are really really tight and I can't really reach behind I just turn well I don't need to do those movements <laughs> uh, so for for guys uh, all those all those muscles which we, we are so proud as well after years of, of workout, workout suddenly it happens that they are very uh, tight i see many guys with a shoulder injury doing the bench press there is a no mobility they load it too heavy going past their range of movement and the shoulder just gave up because they obviously go past the point of the pectoral muscle and then the mobility is not there so lots of injuries the other group of people I've noticed, it's actually quite common, they are runners and cyclists. Mm -hmm. They really think that if they do their discipline, they are so healthy. Uh, and of course, uh, their heart probably is, uh, is quite healthy, but sitting in this position for two, three, five hours, uh, five, yeah. times, uh, five times a week, or more, carpet scrapers. <laughs> it doesn't really, it doesn't, it changes your posture without even, yeah. Without and also, I thought they have uh, often tight calves, there are tight hamstring, again, it would be the hip mobility. So, hamstring, I've noticed the worst I've seen it was actually runners and cyclists. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it was just unbelievable, and still, they don't understand it because they never pay attention. Yeah. Because after two, three hours of cycling, yeah, they think yeah, I've yeah. done so, so much, so why would I do anything else? And unfortunately, the tighter your muscles are, the more it hurts when you start to stretch it. Mm, that's true. Now, on the other hand, can actually yoga and stretch, or how can it help this performance So, in terms of the other sports? Uh, Definitely, it changes uh, the range of movement. Uh. <laughs> Cyclists getting hit by wide vents and breaking bones stick to the mat. <laughs> hmm. I guess who is saying that? Maybe somebody should start stretching with us. <laughs> yeah. So, first of all. Mm, it's range of movement. Uh, yeah. Or even first, we should start. We should start with which sport we are talking about. Mm. For me, for example, when I started to do boxing, uh, I realized I can't even hold my stance mm -hmm. properly. I look like that, yeah. and there was a big gap, and my muscles were just getting tired even without doing anything. Mm, I would just struggle or just pushing my muscles to just keep them together. Yeah. When I started to care more about my mobility, it started to be effortless. I started mm -hmm. to, to be quicker, more relaxed. And again, so we're coming to the biomechanics, mm -hmm. so the range of movement plus the alignment mm -hmm. would be better mm -hmm. and therefore preventing injuries again. So here, range of movement was, it was crucial. The same with uh, my other martial arts. I was training Japanese Nippon Kenpo. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Suddenly I realized that big packs of shoulders prevent me to keep the right stance. Yeah. There was always a gap, which people who were slim, they, they could stand like that without any effort. So I thought I'm fitter, but after three minutes of, of fight, I was exhausted, they were not. So I started to think, hmm, actually small improvement in this, in this area would massively change yeah. all the discipline. And uh, with, uh, with bodybuilding, the bigger people are, this is actually for me now quite <laughs> fun to, to watch them with those big packs and big, uh, big biceps. The range of movement is so short, it, it looks like that. Yeah. Maybe they can take more, but they don't even look good. And I, I can vouch for it because I've done the yoga, then I've done the bodybuilding, and then I came back to the yoga, and I was in excruciating pain. Again, as you said, I couldn't cross maybe the arms, I couldn't cross the legs for building all the muscle, the biomechanics was gone, and the body just didn't feel right. So it needs to be that balance between that strength and flexibility. And that's where you get that ultimate benefit of the exercise, yeah. really. I think if, uh, if you are so tight that in the movement only half of your muscles work, mm. <laughs> so you can't develop it properly yeah. the way you would like to. Yeah, definitely. Now, in terms of the start, where is good to start? So they should, if you guys want to start to do yoga and stretching, so should they perhaps have a look like, as you said, maybe the type of yoga or do something mm -hmm. simple, maybe mm -hmm. on a floor? So depending on the sport and personality, mm -hmm. for people like me, uh, I was definitely not into any spiritual things. I just wanted to stretch. So things like fitness yoga. It or hot touches, the posture. It, right. was, it was a great start. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, to stretch without any other, for me, not necessary things. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to be helped into breathing, concentration, or my life. I just wanted to stretch. Fitness yoga was a great answer. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm sure there are people who just want to, when if, if the job is busy or stressful, they just want to also relax a bit, relax like the mind, mm -hmm. uh, so then probably or Hatha or like pretty much any other yeah, yoga be would, be, more would be an answer, uh, but for, for casual gym user, I think something like fitness yoga or yoga which focuses only on stretching, mm -hmm. As you said, start. in some of the gyms we do have a yoga for athletes or uh, it was yoga for lifting or is actually concentrating on improving the biomechanics through that major muscle group as we said. Now how can the guys can make it more fun so they would like it, they would enjoy to go for a yoga? Uh, for a guy like me, it has to be, be a challenge. Mm -hmm. It has to be a challenge, it has to be some fun in it. Okay. Uh, By challenging means put uh, something uh, from the ego, a little uh, bit, hey? It's <laughs> a competition. It has to be, other, otherwise, uh, otherwise uh, I would start to miss something and find it boring or at least not exciting. Mm -hmm. If I see at least small goal in front of me, then I really want to push a bit more, which is nothing yeah. bad about it because this is how I progress much faster. Mm -hmm. uh, and yoga gives it to you. It's so many positions when one is coming from the other one. So as soon as I reach some level, there is another goal just in front of me. So I say, okay, uh, let's get there. Yeah. Doesn't matter how long it's gonna take, I'm gonna be doing <laughs> this position to get the, the next one. Yes, you are very competitive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how most of the guys, mm -hmm. So maybe they can train in a couples as well, like uh, together. So mm. do the progress. So maybe get a friend, stretch together, mm. do things together, as they usually go train together as well. Uh, this uh, I'm not really sure because no? if I know myself, probably we would start stretching each other to the point that 
Like you would push yourself <laughs> beyond. It wouldn't do <laughs> any good. I remember stretching my friends. Uh, they were stretching me in a very... He made me to stretch him. He made me to stand on his knees as he's sitting. I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm all about the safety. Yeah. No. Mm. <laughs> and n now the more I do yoga, the more positions I know, the more options and variation. Actually, I realize I don't need anyone to stand on my knees. Mm -hmm. I can do it very hard without anybody yeah. and in a completely safe way. Yeah. And so sometimes I really want to get to some pose, but then I realize my body tells me, sorry, no, we have to come back to something else mm -hmm. and practice that. Yeah. So there's no shortcut. Yes. So unfortunately, I wish there mm. would be. <laughs> mm. Now, you said like you really like the physicality of the yoga, of the stretching and everything. So you're not into spiritual bit. But do you think that the yoga also changed you emotionally mm. and mentally? Did it have some impact mm. even that you didn't go there with that particular intention? I think, I mean, actually, I'm sure it did. I'm sure because, uh, many I can <laughs> because many people who don't seem very often, they notice that I became a bit quieter, maybe. Uh, so a bit more grounded, I would say. So it had to be some change. Uh, what I've noticed, it really helps you to concentrate, to focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. It also makes you calmer, maybe because they go all together, that you can't rush anything, so yeah. I can't get nervous, I have to just, it requires patience, so mm -hmm. I think I became more patient and more quiet than I used to be, so mm -hmm. even if I'm not still quiet person, I think that the change, the change is, is there. Yeah. Now, would you say that it had effect on the breath work as well, the way how you breathe? and Because uh, that's quite common put together with the yoga. Mm -hmm. So do you think that that actually helped with your emotional and physical mm -hmm. transformation, perhaps the breath? For sure, for sure. My first yoga, I remember when I went, I was told, don't worry what they are doing, just focus on the breath. And I thought, what are they talking about? This is the, the last thing I'm gonna think of. I want to do what they do and see can I do. Yes. And the same actually with Pilates was the same. Mm -hmm. I said after it was boring and I thought I could do everything, just not exactly with the, the breathing. The, with the breathing. So now actually I start to understand that if I don't really work with my breath, the change will never happen. Mm -hmm. And actually what makes this yoga easier and easier <laughs> is the breath. Is the breath. What's so special about breathing is through the nose. Yes. And the best is the way that you actually hear yourself. Because mm -hmm. of course, I mean, not forget breathing, but... Lots of people do, especially when they come in a new posture or whatever I teach, even in a gym, mm -hmm. you know, even in this mm -hmm. lifting, we have a client and they do things and like breathe, breathe, that's your energy, right? I mean, find out, find out, they will never forget it, they, they, they don't do it right, <laughs> but find out that they will breathe. That's yes. not in a way... They should. They should. And because here we breathe only through the nose, mm -hmm. you can't rush it. Yeah. You can't rush it, and uh, if you hear yourself, you actually slows you down a bit, makes you more concentrated. Mm -hmm. And... I started to use it also in my weight trainings. Okay. I did it for a challenge yeah. because first it's very annoying. It's very annoying. I'm used to this, mm -hmm. and now if I have to do, it, yeah. it naturally slows you down, but also it's much more connecting to what I'm really doing. Yeah, the mind-muscle connection, I mean, it is scientifically proven that you get 30% more out of the exercise if you're really connected with it, because you feel the muscle, you have the contraction, and you're exercising this intention, right? So You start to listen what is really going on in your body, mm -hmm. especially with some complex stretch or complex movement, because on the beginning it's like, oh, it hurts, 
And then, what hurts? And all there, so if you start to breathe into it and actually listening in which part, yeah. then you can focus, okay, so this one is tight. Oh, I thought that there is actually there's something else. Mm -hmm. You start to observe, and when you observe, it really um, helps in your progress. And yeah. some, sometimes you realize that actually uh, this part is not a problem, the problem is something else. Mm -hmm. But you have to notice. Yeah. Now, what about yoga and uh, other sport? We already touched on it a little bit. Yoga, calisthenics, CrossFit. You know, uh, should these type of people who are already very fit, should they go into the yoga as well? And mm -hmm. why? I mean, I think <laughs> I think they definitely should. Uh, all people who are into some discipline and they are fit, they already think of themselves they are fit. Mm -hmm. But they train only only some parts of the body and very often in a very unbalanced way yeah um, and yoga is so complete touching mm -hmm. every joint and every muscle and it's not in terms of just the stretching it's it also the strength and also the strength and just standing on the mat and, doing, and doing these different poses suddenly makes you realize oh my god i'm so bad <laughs> oh my god why i can't do this thing what holding me. I thought I'm strong, but I, I can't hold this, this and this. Uh, I thought I'm flexible, but so why I can't do something? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm professional athlete, so why I can't hold my balance for, for yeah. a, a few seconds? So definitely you will find, if you of course, if you're aiming for perfection, you will find something which you are not good at. There is always some yeah. part which is or too tight or too weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the writer says that practicing regularly shifts the focus inward, and the breast is the best tool for it. And it's true. It's absolutely true. As again, it says the mind muscle connection, the mind body connection, it makes it a whole. And you start to feel also the correct biomechanics. Like the more you do it, I feel when I'm misaligned, or I feel that oh, I pull something and something is just not balanced. So, that's also for you like good warning signs, right? Before this is actually how everything starts. Like you notice, and then how yeah. how yoga can help those people, even if you are crossfit uh, or martial arts or football. Uh, if you start noticing where is the point, then you know this is the point when I can get injured. Yeah, and actually this is what happening especially for all these Sunday football players and mm. because professional sportsmen I'm sure they are doing 30 minutes warm up and specialistic yeah. warm up after and cool down with stretching so of course yoga would help them as well but they don't really need it so much they have other things to train mm -hmm. but no like especially even office people even when just especially office people right they are all the time like this you driving, you know, so the hip flexors are gone, as I said, the shoulder mobility, the back, there will be a, a tightness through the pecs, shoulders. Um, office people, they're completely different story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, office people are tight nearly everywhere. everywhere, because sitting position for 10 hours is over 8 hours, or even mm. for me, for me, for 15 minutes is not possible, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just not the natural position. Mm. We're gonna show you guys all the basic stretching. But before that, so how did you get from, let's say, stretching and analyzing the yoga to teaching yoga? Mm. Maybe somebody's interested in teaching yoga, hey? I mean, my, my journey wasn't, uh, wasn't in the regular one because most, most people first get interested and start practicing, then get good into it, they start liking it, and then they start to teach. Uh, mine stuck from the other side, I just went for one trip. Uh, the trip was not to be instructor and not to get any job, it was just for for a journey, mm -hmm. for some... You wanted some personal growth? Something like that, I've, I just wanted to grow on my own because I've never done it. Mm -hmm. So. I decided to go to India and I did this three-week course. During the, those three weeks, 
It was a big challenge because I also stopped drinking uh, for a few weeks, which was <laughs> even more challenging probably than with yoga. <laughs> and uh, I started to enjoy this actually atmosphere of peace, quiet, polite people around me, mm -hmm. and uh, the whole thing which training yoga twice a week every day, I could see the progress every day. Mm -hmm. Actually, every day the progress was visible, and comparing myself first day and the uh, and the last one was like, ooh, it's amazing. I just want yeah. to to continue. It makes a difference even for me when I went for mm -hmm. like a, a also for the teacher training. It's because you're consciously working on something and you're working on it daily and you dedicate the hours to it. It's like anything else. People need to spend time. If somebody, if you're gonna come and you're gonna do your yoga or your stretches, let's say once a week or once a month, some of people, you're not gonna get obviously the benefit what you need and perhaps then you won't have the chance to fall in love with it because you're not connected to it. But as you said, like you put the intention and you really there enjoyed it. There was everything, there was atmosphere, there was, uh, there was the theory behind it, there was the history why people do it and, also, and mostly practice, which I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw completely different practice that I experienced uh, in the leisure centers. Mm -hmm. And of course, I saw people better than me. I thought that I'm still, a, I still think of myself as a beginner. But my teacher told me, you don't have to know all the poses. Just uh, if, if you master, or not even master, if you learn a few of them, you are ready to teach them. And people don't need all of them. They need to. Yeah. They need something to start. So if you are ready to to just teach those. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be the best teacher in the world first, but it's good enough to to make a difference to someone else. Yeah. And of course, it happened that there was a spot <laughs> <laughs> after. After I was leaving, <laughs> so he got my spot so of the yoga. So right? as soon as I came back, so I didn't have to think and wait for the for my chance and thinking, oh maybe later, maybe later. I was no, I said, Matcha, mm -hmm. you're gonna do my classes. Uh, I, I was forced <laughs> to just straight after New Year's Eve, after my course, go and do it. Yeah. Which of course it helped that it was my center. Mm -hmm. I knew the people I was going for for your classes, so yeah. I knew some people, some people I knew from the gym. So if you come for friendly environment, friend atmosphere, and people actually like you already, and you come yeah. because it's your class, it's really uh, it's enjoyable. You know, at, at least it helps. Yeah, yeah. It helps to start. And also, it's good that it was actually men wanting to willing mm -hmm. to teach the mm -hmm. yoga because I remember the manager when I said to him and I actually said to her. I advised, I was like, okay, well, magic would teach it. And she was very happy because, like, yeah, we do need more men to actually teach this type of classes. Mm -hmm. So it's not such a, you know, girly mm -hmm. thing anymore. So now you have your male teacher. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sure it helps because, like I said in the beginning, it encourages the men to go it, there as well. It encourages it also. I do on my yoga what I like to do. Mm -hmm. So. It's lots of guys with the same problems, who, mm -hmm. and I had a few guys from the gym who just came because they're very, very tight. Yeah. And I showed them how tight they really are, <laughs> which actually was quite fun. Yeah, you like doing things uh, that are not as good. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so after that, it's like, oh my god, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I will keep coming and. And yeah, so the guys shouldn't just be scared. They should have a courage to try, mm -hmm. even when you do it online. Uh, before we're gonna start this practical part, I have a one last question for you, and it is: so, where do you see yourself in the future, in a five years time? You wanna continue with it? Like, mm -hmm. what do you think? I'm still learning. I'm still discovering what I really like. Mm -hmm. So I think this year I will just definitely focus on on the base, so basic development, mm -hmm. basic what I want to get better, and I will try to go to India one or twice at least mm -hmm. to see completely different different schools. Yeah. Like my teacher, I didn't even know what I signed up when I went for it. <laughs> Apparently, I signed up for. Ashtanga, which is very difficult, yeah. uh, 
a very structured, uh, very active, uh, and uh, teacher who, who loved Ashtanga, his philosophy was, you don't need any blocks, you don't need anything, you just do what your body lets you. Mm -hmm. So anything like Yanga Yoga, which you hold positions and do exactly yeah. like it should, he was like, nah, no, 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 this is, but <laughs> I would like to try the other Obviously one as well, different aspects, yes. because probably Yanga teacher would say Ashtanga, no, this is so decent. Yeah, Yanga so is very structured and uh, you do have a props yeah. because you can be talking just 15 minutes about one posture mm -hmm. because it's that detail and you're really going in the perfection to it. So, but then I think it also gives you understanding. So this is the one I would like to try. Mm -hmm. And the next one I would like to try some vinyasa because... Yeah, I uh, love flow. Because flow is... I'm not saying I don't like it, but... I you don't, don't feel comfortable yet? I'm not comfortable. I don't mm -hmm. think I will, I will be so good. Yeah. So it's I my favorite because I have a dancer background, mm -hmm. so for me it's like a dancing and choreography mm -hmm. to make it. And, um, well, my other teacher, because he said too, he said that yoga is like a dance. Yeah. So, and it can be, but people are really beginners, which is like difficult. Yeah, you need to make, mm -hmm. as you said, the basic mm -hmm. of it, so you need to have some structure and then you can build up on it. Mm -hmm. so for now, I would just like to get a bit more classes. Maybe teaching someone uh, privately because it gives you mm -hmm. like really different satisfaction. And yeah. if it's five years, I would like to have my own practice, mm -hmm. small practice, some small studio, small studio, small practice. But no one is telling me what to do, and uh, there is this one-to-one -one connection. Yeah. When I teach, I feel like after the session that I gave something and I made a difference to someone and someone is happy mm -hmm. rather than just coming doing my job and, and leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so let's give everyone who is watching something to make them to think about their flexibility. So we're gonna go through the major body parts. So we'll go into the legs. So if you are a footballer, right, if you are a runner, if you are whatever, playing rugby, or if you're just simply sitting in an office and you're very tight. So we're going through some stretches into your hips, your hamstrings. Uh, we'll go into the shoulders, what are quite important into your posture. We'll go stretching through the chest. We'll go into the back and we stretch the glutes. And that's going to be it. So if you guys have at home, couple of blocks it's always good when you beginner or when you're just stretching to use the blocks if you don't have a blocks don't worry about it you always can use uh, any other prop or you just uh, go in a regression so let's put this mat sideways so people actually can see it nicely the second prop if you want if you want to push yourself a bit more is a yoga belt it's actually firm belt but again, it's not necessary. So I'm going to move it a little bit, maybe this way. Good. Lovely. So we're going to start with your hips and quad. And we said we're going to start with the plain lunge. Bring it a bit more forward and maybe go a bit more further forward. So just do your plain lunge. That's it. Good. Now, if you see that he's got the back nice and straight, if this is not your case and that would be a progression you can use a blocks so the blocks helps to keep your spine nicely aligned now the knee would be somewhere around the foot you don't want to overshoot that's a common mistake people bring the knee in front of the toe and lifting the heel then it's too much pressure on the knee so what you're thinking of nicely lengthening through that left hip flexor that back hip flexor and so that would be your regression and progression slowly you dropping the blocks down right or bring your hands down or as you were showing you can go in a nice with the arm reach and lift up and you can maybe raise the chest slightly higher as well good nice so with this one we're not going to stretch the quad i mean this this one i was quite bad at it so Magic was using for the quad stretch actually the lunge. So 
the, with this position, you would bend one knee. He can bring it completely to the to the uh, wall. For me, it's very tight. So as you see, he's lengthening whole quadriceps. So to make it easier, the knee is now slightly off the floor. So therefore, again, he would feel it into the hip flexor, but also in the quadriceps. So is there a variation? How would you feel this? Uh, for you, you said maybe if you lift the head mm. up. I mean, if you don't really want to change your position, just lean. Lifting yeah. and leaning a bit behind already changes the game. Mm -hmm. uh, if you really go for some more intense, just go closer. Just obviously careful with the knees. If you guys have a, a knees issue, you would go for something softer. You can pat it the knee or you can just do this one lying down. I mean, this is a very common mistake that some people just, lots of people, just stay on this knee. Uh, I actually move it the way that I, the, the point of touching is not on the knee, it's a bit above. Okay, so you would go slightly into that soft tissue mm -hmm. there. And then it's already very, very intense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like, but as I actually did. I was trying to do it, it was for me torture. Mm -hmm. My quads are mm -hmm. so tight. Obviously, as ladies, we have tighter legs than upper body. Very challenging. It's really amazing. But then, if you really want want to feel it, it's enough to just... Going in a back bend, so that would be... If we do it by the wall, just touch the wall. And climb over the wall. And, and climb down. Good. I guarantee that all, all of you <laughs> will feel. So the next one, we had a hamstring stretch, and we were going in a half split. So you can go a bit more forward. Just move. Good. So for the half split, Again, you can use the blocks. So we're doing this one often at my yoga class as well. So your half split, you would start with the hips nicely in one line. So bring the knee a little bit closer to start with, that's it. And your toes are flexed. So the stretch would be coming from the Achilles calf and hamstring. No, it's okay. If you want, you can do other sides, it's up to you. It's gonna be visible, that's it. So the key is not to rotate your hip. Great interview, it looks intense. Yes, it is intense for me, definitely. I like that I'm just watching, hey? So flexing the toe, spine straight, you're going slightly forward, very nice. Now, if you guys don't have a block, you can also soften up the knee. So if I wouldn't have a block, you can bend the knees and you start, but aim is to keep the spine straight. You can lift the legs up or possibly you can go in a full split or go slightly further. As you see now, he's increasing the angle. So for me, I would be for going from the knee under the hip into knee being a diagonal from the hip where we're increasing the stretch. Good. Now the last one what we had, we had the runner stretch. So the third was the runner stretch where you would start as almost in a lunge. But with the runner stretch, go a bit more forward. With the runner stretch, again, it would be now the concentration on the back leg. So I would be concentrating on the hip flexor of the quadriceps, still watching the knee align. You can use the block. We're doing runner stretch in my yoga class as well. You can lift up or you can bring the knee down. So the key, I would be working just from the back leg, keeping the spine nice and lengthened. So that would be your lower body. So very quickly recap any sort of lunges where you lengthen your hip flexor, this knee bend, you were stretching your quadriceps. Very good, very nice. And a half split, you nicely stretching from the Achilles, calf, and a hamstring. Let's go into the shoulders. So shoulders, most of the guys with very tight shoulders, I got tight shoulders from bodybuilding, right? They're not fun. So you can just start just with the simple one again, come a bit more forward. When we interlacing uh, just fingers behind, go into the one, kneeling, interlace the fingers behind your back. Mm -hmm. Just your, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one would be opening up your chest and shoulders. When you interlacing fingers behind your back, that's it. And you're pushing your hands down and chest up. So 
Everyone should be able to interlace. Obviously, the more chest forward, stronger stretch. As a progression, you can go in a forward fold slightly or trying to lift your arms up. Yeah? So, when we are tight in a pecs, again, when you're typing, you're curling, usually shoulders collapsing down. So, that's a very good one for your posture. So, I would this. And you can do it anywhere. Even in your office, you're sitting straight. Pushing shoulders down, make sure your upper traps are not hiking. That's very it's good. It's actually one of those which are, which is really, really pleasant. I, yeah. I actually enjoy it a lot doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. But especially I've noticed during the uh, any upper body training, especially chest or sh shoulder, actually it starts to be more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. It means okay, I should do it even more. Yeah, so once you have the pump, but the muscle yeah. pump is the contraction, it's much harder to do it. Lots of people think already of that, but it's enough to make your elbows straight and sit straight. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed it's, it's difficult enough for most of the guys, the well built guys. Yeah, definitely. So we had the next one, and which one we were doing? We were doing uh, the threading the needle or heart melting pose. I do often this one in Pilates as well. So you are on a quadruped and you one arm sliding underneath. That's it, so the shoulder head nicely staying down. Again, in terms of the position, he is keeping the hip perpendicular. You can bring hip even a bit more. So there is a 90 degrees hip to knee and he pushing the shoulder head down. You can also work on the opposite shoulder by extending the arm or by lifting arms up to sky. So now you're working both shoulders and obviously the ultimate challenge would be to bind this arm from behind the back and trying to grab the right side. So definitely be opening again through the chest, working onto the shoulder. Really good. Nice. So coming up. I had, um, which one was, oh yeah, Anahata, that's it. So with the Anahata that we were going again, is the chest and shoulder combination. So you're sliding this time forward, that's it. Again, hip perpendicular. So you have a two variation. Again, if you would have a block, you can put the block under your forehead to start with. So bringing forehead down. So you're just working on the extension of your elbows, of the shoulder, while you're stretching the chest. Some people, for them, it's hard even to extend the elbows. Now, if you're progressing, you start with a forehead down. Just put forehead down first. Forehead down on the mat. And the final progression would be, as we show, is the chin and chest down. So you're really pushing this all the way down. So it's very strong stretch. Now, remember the breath work. So the exhale would come in a tight area. So if I would feel that I'm tightest through the shoulders, I would be exhaling in the shoulders. If I feel I'm tightest through the chest, I would concentrate on the chest. Beautiful. So this slowly taking us now to the chest work. And we had just the first position. You can go back into the lunge with just plain arms out. So just opening the arms, and so go in a lunge, your low lunge. Mm -hmm. So that's a yoga position, you're going in a low lunge. You can keep the toe tucked in if you feel like, and you're coming in a back bend with both arms open. So the shoulders are away from here, and you can work your way, obviously, you're trying to open it up, nicely stretching through the pectoral muscle. You will feel the stretch through the biceps as well. Now, any sort of back bend, remember, it's not jamming it into the lower area. You're trying to stretch up and over. So first is the lengthening part, and here we have the aspect of the chest as well. Good. So we're going into your next one, and we go into your camel. So with the camel, it's quite intense stretch. So you would start if you want to make it a bit more for your chest and shoulders, maybe two fist width apart. Good. And you start with the hands on the base of your lower back, lower middle back. Now, just by hugging the elbows in, you're already feeling here that strong extension. 
So the camel, you're coming in a back bend again, your first glute lift up and over. The key is to keep thrusting the hip forward. So again, it's rather the full frontal stretch than compression of the lumbar sacral area, lower middle back. Now, you can tuck the toe under if you want to go deeper. If you want to go deeper, you would go try to touch the heels. So grabbing the heels with the arms while he's stretching forward. Now, if you would lose again a little bit depth, then we will start pushing forward much more. Good. Nice. And slowly coming up. Excellent. Which one we had? We had the low lunge. Oh yeah, any of the barriers, you know, would be nice opening. So we're coming slowly through your glutes. That's my least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so also guys need to train the glutes. Yeah, you run in, the glutes are there. It's always glutes are there. So you would feel the tightness. So absolutely easy glute stretch. Show the one when you started, what you find out. So go a bit more forward. So when you find out that about the glute, the glute so this is the one I started to do on the sofa. Just crossing right. the so leg over? first I was just hugging, but on the sofa it was much more comfortable mm -hmm. to sit that way. So every time, everything is about the spine first. So if spine is not nicely raised, now I can hug my knee. Hug the knee. So I mm -hmm. feel very gentle stretch here. But yeah. while you are busy watching something, actually it's good enough, it's a good start. Yeah, I know like in Asia they have all these like positions where they're squatting like the whole day, they're mm -hmm. sitting just here, just to get the mobility of and the hip, is, isn't that, it? It's actually very visible that all the Asian people, they are so flexible with the Mm. That is because every time they do is sitting that way, sitting in lotus, yeah. or being being uh, in their squat their to, position to, to western. Yes, so to this definitely. I saw that I don't feel anything, but when you ground firmly through the both glutes and you tight up the leg, just by pulling the leg in and lengthening, you will feel actually already stretched through the glute minimus medius, the side of the booty. Definitely helping helping me out because I'm tired there. It's very gentle one. So it's a gentle one. Good to start. That's why we're going into the less gentle <laughs> one, and it's a pigeon. So it's a half pigeon. Pigeons got many variations. So again, you can start with more forward. So this is a half pigeon. Your one leg is bent. So ideally. You would be, you need to listen to the body. You would start with a 90 degree. If the glutes are tight, as you see that he is quite far off the floor, I would be putting block as a support, or you can slide any cushion. But the alignment is good then because both hips are nicely in one straight line. His shoulders are aligned, the spine is straight, and he supports himself. Now, uh, try to also watch that back leg. It quite often happens, I come from the other side, that people are twisting here the ankle. So this is a good way how to also work on your ankle alignment. Now, if you feel that you can go further, you can start with the block and bring the forearms on a block. So that would be the first position, again, always goes by the spine keeping the hip alignment because they'll still be working on the hip flexor of the extended leg but what tends to be tighter is usually the glutes and the final progression would be you would take the blocks down or perhaps completely extend the arms and you lie down with straight back now i see many times in a class people do this and it seems so easy for you so they just rest the position lots of ladies do uh, they keeping the heel right in the groin. So I said you need to come up and bring the leg more of the 90 degree angle. So it's for me a different if I'm with my leg here, then it's very easy to lie down. Or when you extend that leg in a 90 degrees and now 
the glue is definitely off the floor so make sure hi alex alex saying hi to you looking good <laughs> very nice alex you need to stretch with us i know in one hand it's gonna be rosé but in other hand yoga block so definitely you increasing the angle so you increasing your glute stretch as well now you obviously need to do both legs you will find that one side is always tighter that's the same as you have a dominant right arm or left that goes with your legs as well surprisingly and there is no rule uh, for that uh, normally our right if it's stronger is it's also tighter yeah with legs uh, i know that there is no rule for that for offer i had it the same for me it comes maybe personal as well and for it's for two reasons so if you have one side more muscular it's definitely tighter more muscle less flexibility nevertheless as of his legs not everyone is right-handed and right leg you can be other way around that's true and another thing what can affect your stretch is a previous injury because i partially torn both hamstrings one two years ago one one year ago and it makes actually the difference so my better leg is now the worst leg due to the scarring tissue what your injury can cause and there it makes a difference we do one more for the for the booty and it was the cow face so with the cow face go a bit more forward well, this, this is, is toughy this is what guys struggle because of bigger legs bigger legs yeah so you're crossing one leg of another so the position is the knee should be on top of each other if you guys feel that you do have a big gap there again it can be slide the block or break or you just keep it there now your toes are extended outwards so for me this one is quite struggle as well let's do it both of us so absolute torture really it is so i could put the you don't train the glute so you can flex your feet to protect the knees that's it bring them out of the booty if you want to make it harder make sure both glutes are nicely grounded you can go in a forward fold so we're going in a forward fold the chest is actually pressing on your knees and again you feel it through the glute you're breathing spine would be straight or I would be trying to open up the legs more and then go down out. Or, or if, you, <laughs> if you want to connect it to something else, go for the We're bind. Going now forward. it's time to be touched. <laughs> That's what I wanted to show you. That's what we forgot. We do the one more. So what he was showing, you can go for addition to grab your hand. That's another good stretch for your shoulder and your hamstring. So get on this position. Come just in your easy sit. Very important for your shoulder mobility. Alex, this one is for you. Your triceps. So how would we stretch the triceps? So the basic stretch would be just with the arm behind the back. Yeah. So for some of people, this is challenge already on its own. So you can use your hand to bring the elbow to the position also watch your spine you don't want to be pulling the neck down so lifting and the spine is nice and straight so you slowly reaching just the fingers to the half of the back breathe right the exhale is always when you want to go deeper now with the yoga we do the other one when you want to be a bit more advanced you're bringing the both arms to the game and you're trying to actually interlace the fingers reach the fingers from the side so this is quite challenging i know if uh, someone wants to practice you can use for example the yoga belt so if you're here holding the belt you're creating that extra extra space so you can work on a nicely full extending from the chest and work your way through the belt so openings to the both sides and definitely again you would find it harder on the dominant side good what i've noticed lots of people what they do they want to do 
to think too fast. So yeah. rather than slowly work opening and going down, they mm -hmm. want to pull. So pull. basically what they do, they do submission on the shoulder, which yeah. obviously is painful, mm -hmm. and obviously stops them halfway when the elbow is here and they just try to pull. Pull it, yeah. If you just do it slowly. And work start with a nice posture, and right? work of this opening, of the opening, opening yeah. here and bringing the elbow closer rather than just stupidly pulling. Just pulling down and then going through various back positions. Just take three breaths rather than one breath. Yes. And if you go. So talking about the back, we have the final stretches and it's for your back. We've done the all major body parts. So for the back, we just started with the plain cat. So it's your angry cat position. Again, you would be nicely perpendicular, so I go back. So my hip would be aligned with the knee and the shoulder, elbow, wrist nicely aligned. So then, or we would go into angry cat, so curving the spine, so bringing the head down, keeping a nice full extension of the back. The key is also relax from the neck and you can gently start rocking forward and back. Just go forward and back in the angry cat. Go in the angry cat and just rock in this position forward and back. I do often this one, ladies, with you in my Pilates. So you're looking for the tightest spot on your spine. Usually it is the area on your thoracic spine, upper back. When you find the tightest spot, stop there and thrust even more. It's really nicely he curved up. He's pressing of the palm of the hand to getting the height, ear to shoulder, but the head is completely relaxing as the gravity is stretching the spine. Now you can reverse it and you can go in a back bend. Very careful if you have a back issue. Here we're opening up externally nicely shoulders. He's stretching the chest. He is shortening through the spine. He's lengthening through the abdomen wall. Right? So uh, that's very nice for the back mobility. Because as we said, you were working in an office most of the day what you do, you typing, you typing, you looking down, you curving down. We always into this hunch position, so it's very nice to reverse it in a back bend, because the lumbar area, that's the area of the, the middle back, right? It's got the curve, it's got S curve, and you know some ladies they have this like the duck duck back and duck bum, so they need to go in a neutral spine posterior tilt a little bit, tie the pelvis forward and maintain it neutral. Nevertheless, what can happen if you don't do enough back bend, the lumbar curve can start flattening up. And actually, I'm the good example of it because it happened to me. So I feel coming from the gymnastic to being absolutely uh, decreased mobility in terms of that middle back. So let's go into something tougher. And we had we had the twist. So a very nice way how to release the spine is in a spinal twist. Maybe go uh, facing the camera with this one. So you would be in an easy seat, just crossing the legs, where one hand is on the floor, other hand would be slightly further back. So rotating behind the shoulder, his spine is nice and straight, and he would be also turning the chin. So you can turn the chin the other way. That's it. Perfect. Now, if you realize you can't sit with the spine straight, you can bring the head on the top of the knee. So he would bring the head on the left knee, what will help him to have the nice erection up and then extend it nicely behind. So you're twisting always with a straight spine. Beautiful. And you would need to do on both sides. So the key is not to lean forward, not to lean back. The last one, what we had, we had the other side, beautiful, rolling shoulders down, nice. So also, if you wanna stretch to the side, so any of this lengthening in a seated position to start, you releasing your QL, the quadratus lumborum usually is the muscle from your hip to the rib cage, these ones are tight, so it's very nice to stretch. The common mistake what guys doing, or a lot of people, not just the guys, ladies, they're going forward, and this is how they stretch. So completely losing the back, so he wants to open up, 
as we said, elbow to sky, so feel the side stretch and also opening through your chest. Well, what I've noticed what mostly guys do is that. Mm -hmm. So, so they, can they can go extend. even further, but they can extend the arm. They completely move the point. Yeah. So it's always stretch up and over, and it will actually nicely lengthen also your lats, your wings. Yeah. Because lats being tight with the guys as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? Lats, pegs, I mean, lots of things. Very good. Nice. So we're going to do a very quick recap. You go other side. So hopefully, guys, you were stretching with us. <laughs> Let's see. I, I doubt it. Maybe some of you. But the video will be highlighted. So it's going to be available on the replay every time. Now, if you guys want to meet Machak in person, he works in everyone's active gym. So you can visit his classes. Or you can send me a message. I will deliver the message to him. Now, as a departing message, what do you have for guys? What would you say, the guys? Uh, just don't be afraid of, of try uh, yoga and give it a chance. Uh, and there is a big chance that you will just fall in love like I did. Perfect. So thank you very much. Ah, oh, great. Thank you, Kat and Macha. He's from Dorota. So thank you for everyone who were watching. If you guys want, I will recap the stretches. I can write it to you down or you can come back to the video. Keep stretching the major body part. It's very important for your biomechanics to prevent the injuries, to improve and how you can practice it. Tomorrow with my yoga, 10 in the morning here on the Twitch. So thank you very much, Magic. Namaste. Hey, good job. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a beautiful rest of the weekend.